Alrighty, what's up guys? So today, we're gonna be putting in some new parts on the uh, Chevy SS. Why? I'm not exactly sure, because we don't really even drive it. But maybe we'll change that up, right? We put wheels on it, full X-Force exhaust with the Varix mufflers, Maverick Man coilovers, and well now, we have a DSX auxiliary setup, um, we also have a used Whipple supercharger that we bought. Uh, I bought it a while ago on offer up. The guy blocked me right after, so I'm hoping it's good. But what better car to try it on than this guy? I initially bought the uh, supercharger for the Blue SS, but we have other plans for that car, so it's gonna go on here. And I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do with this car. Worst comes to worst, we'll do a giveaway. Somebody else will get to enjoy it. As long as everything is good, um, we're going to test it out, we're going to tune it, flex fuel, the whole nine injectors, and maybe we will run a giveaway. We'll try it out, we'll drive it, we'll do some burnouts, we'll have some fun, and we'll record it all here, so stay tuned. So we got the hood off this thing, and as you can see, it looks completely stock besides it has some aftermarket spark plug wires, obviously the headers, which you can see down there, and they still look very fresh. I mean, they've been on there, probably driven it once since they've been on there. So now we're going to start with removing the stock air filter and the intake manifold, the fuel line, and go from there. I don't think it should take too long. It is a little bit dirty, so maybe we should pressure wash it after the fact everything is on so that everything is clean. Pressure wash the engine bay and whatnot. Maybe we'll get it all detailed, who knows. All right, so we're trucking along. Got the coil packs off, coil pack on that side off. We got all the little vacuum lines off, or the EVAP lines, I should say. So everything here is all off. We gotta remove these and change those out, which that's gonna be fun. And for now, we'll just push them over to the side, get them down here, get them out of the way, and now we have to pull the intake manifold off. Pull the intake manifold off, fuel reel off, and see where we go from there. So we have the whole intake manifold off. Um, I did clean up all the uh, mice droppings and in the into. Oh, there's still some there. We had to clean it up a little bit more. Um, gonna clean it up, put the new gaskets on. Get ready to go on. I am gonna detail the whole car once it's all back together so I don't get no water inside the motor. For the most part, it does need a catch can, but it'll do what it can for now. We're not trying to make crazy power out of this thing. I think like 550 to 600 horsepower reliably would be fine. It is a stock LS3 with just a cam and full exhaust. So it's gonna have pretty much everything. What I would recommend doing if somebody's gonna do something like this is probably do forged internals, ARP head studs, ARP rod bolts, and a true name kit. This is not gonna get driven hard at all. We'll probably do a couple of burnouts for a couple of videos. But other than that, my girlfriend might drive it here and there. And she doesn't know, but we might give this thing away. So stay tuned because uh, we're gonna let her drive it and then I'm gonna throw the idea out there. So at the end of the day, we did give this to her like a year and a half ago. So I did all this work on it. We don't drive it. I wanna drive it. But in reality, we have like 12 to 13 cars right now. One of them has to go. And this is the best looking one. So I think everyone would want to go with this one for now. The Blue SS, I know everybody wants the Blue SS actually, but the Blue SS isn't going anywhere yet. Um, we need to make content with that car. Once we're done making content with it and we did a couple events with it, then we'll talk then. But for now, let's get back to work. So it took a little bit, but put new gaskets on there. Um, have the injectors right here and this box of parts. And to figure out how all this goes back on there, should be, should be interesting. So we do have the blower sitting there. 
It's not completely finished yet. I'm really, really starting to regret throwing this on there. I really want to put it on my other car. We do have something working with Vortec right now to get a blower on the blue car. So that's the reason why we're not keeping this. Obviously, it's a competitor. I had bought that for cheap. So I was like, screw it. I'll buy it for one of the cars. Um, worst comes to worst, I'll resell it. Uh, like I said, it all spins nice. Like it spins nice and freely. So I'm hoping everything is good because again, the seller blocked me on offer up as soon as I bought it. Had a question and he was no longer there. So just hoping everything is good with it. Other than that, the thing is heavy. It weighs 80 pounds. And that's what really kills me about wanting to put it on in, on the blue, the Cheater SS because I don't need any more weight on that thing. That thing's already heavy. So we weighed it, it's 80 pounds. And that was without the heat exchanger. So with the heat exchanger and water and all that, it'd be pretty heavy. Yo, what up guys? We're back. This is uh, day two of working on the car. Can't get everything done in one day, you know? I still work a nine to five, so here we go. We get going. So far, we have the blower sitting on there. We have to take it right back off. It's not bolted down, just set it on there so nothing got in the uh, heads while overnight pretty much. I have to change out the two heater hoses and it's kind of hard because I just got a box with parts. So I don't know where anything goes and I have to pretty much figure it out. So I have to put the uh, cooling hoses to the blower on as well and the hoses, change out these hoses over here. We can mount the blower, set it on there completely, put the injectors on, put the harness on, coil packs back on, and then it's just the heat exchanger and these vacuum lines here. All right, so right now what we're doing is we're tightening down all these small bolts and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get in there. So you can see the fuel line running across the top of the water pump is pretty sketchy. But looking online, it looks like that's how it goes. I don't, I don't know how I feel with heat and my fuel line sitting right next to it, but we'll go with what it says online. And then I'm just pretty much trying to figure out where all these bolts go. I'll show you guys what we got going on. Um, I have to change the plugs out, so I left that side of the coil packs off. Took off these spark plug wires. I'm going to go ahead and do that so I can put all of that together. And then all that will be left is just the heat exchanger. So unfortunately, I have to remove the front bumper. But it's not that big of a deal. It's not too hard. It's just a little more work, you know? This is pretty much done. I'm not sure if I'm missing other things on there. Like, it looks like something bolts here, but I'm not exactly sure. Either way, it looks like it's all good. Again, the blower felt and spins good. The belt is on now. So I'm just hoping that this thing works just fine. We do have to install a uh, DSX flex fuel sensor and an auxiliary pump. And it does have FIC 1300 injectors in there. So we have one side of the plugs, coil packs, everything done. Coil wires are a little long, so I flipped them upside down on some of them so that make sure they don't touch the header. Looks a little ugly, but that will do. This is to the intake air temperature sensor. And I believe I have to take it out of here from what I read online. So I got to figure that out as well. Got the belt and everything on. Got the flex fuel sensor ran. I really don't like the location of these things, but that's where the kit puts it. And so that the wire doesn't get screwed up, I just wrapped it around the harness. It's pinned in there and it's pretty much ready to go. I did read just now that the map sensor in the back has to be a red one. What sucks about that? is that it's all installed already. So to get back there, it's gonna be fun. All right, so we got this side on. We also have this this side of the coil packs on, all the wiring's there. We have to put this to the intake. We have to put the heat exchanger on. This car does have an upgraded transmission cooler. Probably gonna have to cut these bolts down. I'm not a fan of these ugly brackets, so I'll probably paint them black. So, you, Cause you can see them through the grill and it looks pretty ugly. Now, the biggest problem that I have right now is this thing has an aftermarket grill so that you can run a heat exchanger and you can get complete airflow to it. 
we can sacrifice getting rid of the bumper support. If you wreck, it's gonna destroy the car. We're about here now. We have the heat exchanger mounted in there. I was trying to do away with this and the whole bumper support because that grill shows a lot. But unfortunately we can't unless we made a bracket for it to bolt to because it bolts to here. And I think that bracket would look ugly as well. What's pretty cool is the heat exchanger is pretty big. Um, it should get enough air. I have to mount the hoses. I have to mount this guy in there as well. I have to figure out how this hose routes and kind of clean everything up, you know. And I still have the auxiliary pump to do. So realistically, it might get tuned Sunday if we're able to do it. If not... Um, at least we'll make it drivable to get it out of the garage and start on another project. And yes, I have another project. We have like two more projects and one's going to be actually pretty cool for the channel, I think. Alrighty, so we're like on day four of this project. She's got so much stuff going on. We acquired a treadmill. Don't know how much we're going to use that, but we need a nut here and I'm missing two clamps. I found this one here in my house that I have that will fit on there. This one's obviously a lot nicer than these, but for now, I just have to get it on there. This is really not gonna go anywhere once I tighten it all down, so I'll do that for now, but I do obviously need to find clamps for this side. We got this thing mounted in here. All right, so headlights are on. All that's all cleaned up. Zip tied some of the wiring there so it didn't look completely like crap. I still don't like it, but can't really hide it too well. I guess I could have put it in here which would have made it look a little better under the bumper support, but try to keep it low so in case somebody wrecks it. Um, I have to figure out a way to mount this. We have a ground here, power here, and then we have to figure out where this guy goes. All of this is done. I put zip ties on here to hold all three of them together. Not a big fan of how I ran the wiring here, but I also didn't want to cut open the harness to run that. I still need clamps on there. Still need to change out the map sensor in the back and still need to put the auxiliary pump. So we're pretty much almost ready to go. Map sensor was swapped out. The only thing that I'm confused about is where this guy goes and then I have to mount this somewhere so it's not sitting against the radiator. All right, so we got this thing off the ground and it says to jack up the back so all the fuel can rush forward. We probably should put a Camaro differential in here because we know these uh, differentials kind of suck. So we got this exhaust though. X-Force has some pretty sick looking TIG welded exhaust. Unfortunately, it scrapes going into my backyard, so excuse the mud. And up there on the uh, catted section. Maverick Man coilovers. Am I breaking some type of crime? It's just beer from Australia, bro. Ooh, that's not bad. All right, so we got the pump kit done. Um, you can see back here all of the, let me get the light in here. You can see all of the stuff that it requires there so it supposedly doesn't leak. We tapped it, um, we spilled a lot of fuel. And there it is there. I have to fish the wire, that's why that wire is down there. But we had to zip tie along the frame rail there. And yeah. That's what will be going on. This thing is missing a bolt. So Guy was tuning the car and we have a fuel leak. The injectors are leaking as you see them spraying there quite a bit I think it's just one I hope it's just that one because if it's that side as well I have to pull off the whole blower and there's nothing I can do about the fuel leak right now unless I disconnect the fuel pump
So I'm just trying to get this done and over with. This side of the injectors were leaking. I happen to have a spare set of injectors, so we changed the O-rings. I think it was just one, but I just changed them all. I didn't want to deal with it again. I do have to connect this guy. Fortunately, I don't have that plug there, so that's going to result in me either going to go find that plug or cutting it and extending it. It needs to go to here. So we need these two wires to relocate the IAT to the back of the uh, blower. We bled the supercharger, that's already done. We connected the, so that's how you connect the heat exchanger pump, that's done. I need to connect those two guys there for the auxiliary pump, haven't done that yet, that's next. So I just have this left, that guy left, put the front bumper on, and the car's pretty much done after that. Probably gonna leave it without a hood for now just cause it looks kinda cool, but um, We'll see how it goes. Alrighty, so we got the car all done. That's not the car, that's the car. But we got the car all done. Right now what we're doing is cleaning up the garage. All the cars are outside. Kinda miss looking at this thing. I need to get back in it. Then we got the blue SS and we got the white one. That one's pretty much ready to go. Looks back to the way it was. And She is back. So, sorry if it's overly exposed. But uh, yeah, it's back. Have two more wires to wire up and then it gets tuned. Other than that, you see the heat exchanger in there. Sounds good. All right guys, so that thing is loaded. It's on the trailer and we're gonna take it to get tuned. We're gonna see what it does. I'm hoping it makes about 600 on flex fuel on E85. Um, it's currently right now on 91. Full exhaust, it does have high flow cats. It has a GP tuning boost cam. And I don't know how much boost that thing's gonna make. The blower sounds good, it sounds healthy, so that's a good thing. It took me a little longer than expected, but I just wanted to make sure everything was right. So, that being said, we'll get that going. You guys kind of already got a sneak peek of the new project. I think it's kind of cool, it's kind of different, but there's reasons why I'm doing this project and you guys will see it next.